And I've got to say, I was stunned the first time I heard about this issue. Have you heard of SIM cloning or SIM swapping? We're talking about the SIM card inside your cell phone. Well, Jonathan Kimmett with Alias Cybersecurity is here to tell us more. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Wow, what an eye-opener this was. We got an email from our IT head about, you know, everybody has SIM cards in our phone, and that's where this whole scam starts. What is a SIM card? What does a SIM card do? So your SIM card is your unique identifier for your phone, uh, and it's tied to the cellular company that you you contract with. Now you have some that are physical cards that's in some phones, and you have an eSIM, which was an embedded SIM card. But that SIM card it stands for Subject Identity Identity Module, mm -hmm. and it's just a unique identifier. And what they do is this, the cell company uses that as, oh, this SIM card is yours this SIM card is mine. So that's how they track you and that's how they say, okay, all this service, the phone number and this text messages goes to this phone with this SIM card in it. And just to be clear for folks at home, you have to have a SIM card for your phone to be operational. It's not an opt-in, opt-out, I no. don't want a SIM. You gotta have a SIM card. Right, when you go to a, a cell phone store, you can buy just a SIM card and put it into a phone that you purchase. Mm -hmm. um, or if you get a new phone, you can swap your SIM card into the new phone because that's how the carrier knows who you are. Okay, so SIM cloning, SIM jacking, SIM swapping, we're talking about the same thing. This is the scam. Explain this to us. What is the SIM swapping? So since that, that SIM card really is your identity in your phone, if someone were to convince a cell company to move your phone number to a new SIM card, then they become you. They receive your phone calls. They receive your text messages. Wow. Mm, and how do they do this? I mean, is it just a matter of tricking someone who is maybe not paying attention or just taking advantage of vulnerabilities. How do they get this? Well, SIM swapping, the process is actually a common thing because if you get a new phone, you need to move your service over to your new phone. So this is a normal thing that the companies will do. A legitimate thing. Absolutely. But because it's so normal, if I'm an attacker, I may go to the company and say, oh, well, I'm Jonathan Kimmett or Dave Davis or mm -hmm. whoever, and, and I need to move my, my phone number to a new phone. And you might be able to trick them. You could also bribe them. You could also extort them. So you're dealing mm -hmm. with a social attack. It's not necessarily a technical attack. You're trying to convince a person to do something for the benefit of the malicious attacker. Very interesting. And so what does this do? If your SIM is jacked by somebody, you know, if, you, if somebody steals your SIM, what, what kind of implications are there? What well, do they have access to? Number one, your phone's not going to work anymore because okay. all your phone calls and your texts are going to another phone. But if I'm the attacker and I have your phone number, number in your text messages, I could log into a service as you. I could multi-factor as you. I could do a variety of things because a lot of people will identify you based off your phone number. You could face ID? Um, do you think you could do that? I, I don't know. I, I just I kind of threw that out to you. I didn't yeah. prepare you for that. No, no, it's not going to be face ID because that's going to be based on the phone. Okay. But if you're logging into your bank and the bank is going to send you a text message as part of your multi-factor authentication, it's going to go to the attacker instead oh. of to you. Wow. So they're going to have your phone, your phone or your phone number, and your text messaging. So they might be able to convince a service, a bank or a website, that they're really you. So a devastating. Potentially devastating it can be, attack. Yes, very much so. So how do we avoid it? I know what we had mentioned off the top, the FBI is tracking this, how to prevent it. Well, so it's really hard to prevent the SIM swapping because if you if you can convince someone to do it either uh, through a legitimate process or through extortion or through bribery, that phone number is going to move. And that's really hard to prevent. However, you can protect your other accounts. You can make sure that you're not using text messaging as your multi-factor. Use okay. Authenticator app. Uh, make sure you don't give out your phone numbers. There are people who use that to call you and identify you as that is you. Question who you're giving your phone number to. Absolutely. Be very careful. Your phone number is your personal identification in some cases. So be very careful who you give that to. And I want to zoom in on this because it was at the very bottom of the full screen. And I want people to catch this. I, it, I, you know, do not put your passwords 
on your phone. Yes. Write them down on paper, put them somewhere else, but if they get access to it, that can be a huge problem, obviously. I, I encourage the use, in some cases, for password managers, um, so you don't, okay. don't keep your passwords in clear text. Don't, don't keep them in places that people can get access to. Um, mm -hmm. But it's the same with keeping personal, or personal data on here, not just passwords. Um, in, in the case of SIM swapping, it's really getting access to other services, such as credit cards, bank accounts, other online services but as a general rule be very careful what you put on a phone what you keep on a phone and what you use your phone to access well Jonathan Kimmett with alias uh, cybersecurity thank you so much you all are uh, you do worldwide business you see a lot of things and I appreciate you enlightening us on this very big issue well thanks for having me absolutely